information. Okay. Cool. Hey guys, that broke up. So part two, Cece, we we're talking about uh, your advice was facing your fears um, or that aspect to yourself. It's a really important side of shadow. Um, mm. And would you suggest people do it baby steps? Because I'm assuming most people know their fears, right? Or, or there are people you've met that don't aren't aware of their fears. And maybe there's that level of unconsciousness um, that people aren't aware. The thing with fear is that it's 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 scary, right? And with things that we're afraid of, we develop coping mechanisms, things that we don't like excuses in our own mind so we don't need to look at them so some people think when i say fear i mean a bear a lion a tiger things that you don't actually face in your real life and the daunting thing the thing about fear is that it makes people feel so helpless that they don't actually want to look at it so you are fairly conscious you are on your awakening journey so you can be aware that i have fears that i don't want to look at some people think i have these three fears and i never need to look at these things again after I overcome these fears whereas you don't overcome and conquer fear you grow into more of what you want to grow into the fear mm. will always be there you know mm. but mm. yes there are people who like have like a, an arrogance and pride as a as like a defense mechanism from the fear because they feel so defeated by the fear that mm. they're not conscious of the fact that it's there mm. you're right yeah it's weird um yeah because i uh, one example um for me is i had a lot of um social anxiety social anxiety has ruled my my story and my trauma so i had so much fear in me that at certain points i couldn't even walk up to an old person and, and ask a simple question like the time like where things are because it was too uh it wasn't just my parents programming it was my own trauma and hiding chain so but i learned over time in practice how to get rid of it and to me now mm. it's almost ridiculous that but it was a part of me that I was crippled fear because I would challenge myself to do it and cry because I couldn't do it I would spend hours cheating myself up to ask a stranger for the time and I can do it. but now it seems silly that I had it and I did it through practice but I can't say I have the same fear in me I don't feel like I have a fear to walk up to a person and ask for the time when I need to know something I don't feel like that it's in me anymore in some bit, some things. But I don't know, maybe it's. Yeah, and I guess that's cool because you exercised that muscle. You became aware that I have this fear. You did the work of wanting to overcome that fear because you wanted to be more socially integrated. And then you you actively did things that would help you move away from that fear. So if something else were to be triggered, like um, a specific person that you really wanted to meet, for example, or someone who makes you feel in a certain way, that may be triggered or not. I'm not accusing you. I'm just using that as an example where that may be triggered. And then because you've exercised that muscle so much, you have the neural pathway to say, I feel this way. I can actually do something about it and do something differently to how I'm feeling right now. So I can approach her in this way. I can crack a joke. I mm. can um, ask the time. I can do that because you've done that. So even if it were to come up, you have the coping mechanisms now to actually overcome the fear. So mm. whereas someone who has this like strong need to not have that fear, when it comes up, they feel like shit. They feel mm. like a failure. Like, oh, damn it, I thought I was better than this. You're not better than this because you're human. Mm. So if that comes up again, it's like, okay, I've dealt with this. I know how to deal with it. It kind of builds the confidence in then overcoming that fear. Um, like, for example, I'm a public speaking coach and a lot of people fear public speaking. It's like a, a deep, deep terror for a lot mm. of people. Mm. And the thing with that fear is that it can get better if you have it, but it's definitely not going to go away overnight or mm -hmm. even at all. So you may start it, I can't even say my name without peeing on stage, to I can say my name, to I can say a paragraph, to I can say a whole speech. And then your fear goes from like 10 to 5 to 2. And then suddenly you thrust in like the middle of the stadium and it goes back up to 8. But because you've learned how to work it down, you then develop the tools to actually talk yourself back down to two or to zero in certain contexts. So 
it's not seeing that fear as a, as an enemy, as a foe. It's actually learning how to befriend it so that, that you're not experiencing it as something you want to dissociate from because it's a part of you. Yeah, that's powerful what you said. I'm thinking for myself and, and other people too, we can all relate to when we're making big um, transitions in life, like we're taking what we perceive to the outer world as big moves. So maybe new partnerships, new friends, deep friendships, new traveling. So, so for me, the example yeah. is I, I always travel and I've got used to let, not getting too attached and letting go to some degree when I'm moving around to new locations. But I'll be honest, I, I still feel, even though I practice loads of traveling and I should, my brain should know, I still feel um, when I'm moving places and I've been somewhere too long, I still feel an attachment and nervousness almost like a fear I feel like it's a fear of moving when it when it comes to them uh, I used to be really bad and suffer that days before the event now uh, because I've grown so much I'll feel it in an appropriate moments I guess like a kid when I'm about to get into it so now I've got to move now I'm sad now I'm afraid the nervousness I think is just fear of the unknown so I'm thinking about I'm thinking fear of the unknown I guess yeah it's a big one mm. And also feeling insecure, like when you're somewhere, you feel safe, you feel secure, you know where you're sleeping, where you're eating. When oh, you're yeah. in transit, you're insecure. And yeah. so it's something that your body feels and you feel emotionally. And then to have to readjust emotionally to where you're going and to detach from where you've been. Like it's it's it would be weird if you didn't feel that way, actually, yeah. because it's 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 very human. It's how we, we secure ourselves in the environment that we're in to make sure that we're going to be safe. It's a good function of the ego, you know? Mm. Um, so when you become so dissociated from your ego or numb, then you don't have those types of feelings. You kind of like set off like a bird, um, mm. which is weird because you're not a bird, you're a human. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. You don't appreciate what's going on. You're just ch chasing the next moment and the moment and moment. So that's, yeah, it's very true. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah, totally. Here's a question. Um, what's your favorite? Yeah. What was your favorite no. shadow word? Like of all the ones that you, you know and you like to talk about, which is the favorite? Which is the one that is the most either meaningful to you? Yeah, go for that. What's the most meaningful one oh. to you? User, for sure. Um, because I spent a, a, a large part of my life like being an overachiever and, and putting a lot of my identity into that. And I never looked at the parts of myself that were a loser because mm. I was so afraid of being a loser and mm. then overcompensating with things that other people can see that, look, I'm not a loser, um, as opposed to actually embracing the parts where I'm a loser in a lot of respect and that's okay. Um, yeah. Achieving one aspect of yourself doesn't take that away from you and that I can still love the loser in me. And actually, it, it helps me so much, like give myself more grace because then it's okay to be a loser at certain things and it's oh, you're always going to be a loser. There's, not, there's never going to be a time where you've achieved your way out of that aspect of yourself of your shadow and that loving the loser kind of helps you to become a more integrated winner in in all aspects of yourself where the yeah. winning is usually external and the loser is still within you so going inward and loving the loser within is oh. definitely my favorite part of the shadow especially in this like success driven society where everyone's trying to be on the cover of something to mm. actually sit and be the loser and just be that and love that part of yourself is a very liberating part of the shadow for me right now. I like that. Um, and also to begin at anything, we can't be good at everything. You have to be, a. sorry, from what you're saying, you have to, be, I interpret it as loser. Like you can't be good at something if you've not tried it, but you're willing to do a class in it. You have to be humble. It comes back to what I said with the, the people that get lost in pride. So yeah. In a way, if you're just setting up as an example, juice mastery, and that's your thing, you rotates around your brain all the time. You're helping millions of people, but and that's great. You're helping millions of people. I'm not judging your role here. I'm judging your um, next evolution because you're stopping yourself because you're not putting yourself in positions where you can be a loser. Because if, if you can put yeah. yourself in, do you know what I mean? You need to put yourself in in life. Life is a position where you have to put yourselves in places where you, if not, you won't grow. 
and that's the pride yeah. thing I'm talking about it stops people you need to yeah 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 and being so afraid of being seen to be a loser you know being afraid of okay you are master juice cleanse, you've helped millions of people, you've healed cancer, you got a Nobel Prize, great. Um, there's still parts of yourself where you're a loser, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, a, it doesn't take away from what you've got, but, mm. and that part helps you grow, because some people are very accomplished, they are losers as parents, and they don't know how to face that about themselves, that you're not a, a bad person because you're a loser like yes you are a loser as a parent and this is the evidence let's look at you know the evidence of that but it's still okay to be that loser as a parent you know yeah. love that loser parent that you are and that will help you integrate and, and become less of a loser because you're able to face that whereas the loser brings up a lot of defense mechanisms um, to say no I'm not and then you try to rattle off a CV on something you paid school fees you bought clothes you can still be a loser it's okay you know what I mean yeah yeah uh, another example I'm thinking of is in Facebook's taught me a lot so I see a lot of people on newsfeed um, newsfeed that are posting vulnerable thoughts so things that the, instead of pridefully showing off sometimes people do the opposite they'll they'll humble mm. themselves and say look you may think of me as this and that but actually they'll say it in words on Facebook. I'm this and this, and I've got this problem and this problem. And mm. it makes you more human. Um, yeah. You're more human and what's the word for it? People can empathize with you bigger, deeper. You're more real yeah. and more authentic. And people, people can, yeah, if you're just admit your flaws that, listen, like for yeah. me, I can't even cook. So, I mean, maybe in the future, may, I can learn. I can learn mm. but I don't beat myself up I, I really don't beat myself up for the fact that I can't do one thing that maybe other people would think wow that's ridiculous you can't do that I'm like yeah well maybe I want to spend my time doing other things maybe I'm okay um maybe I can maybe I'm I can have other people cook for me maybe I can go and buy my food I don't need to you know can I can just eat fruits it's like yeah mm. yeah and it's okay that you can't cook like it, it, it's not something where it needs to not define you and now mm -hmm. you need to feel shit about yourself because if you had to you could learn you know like it's yeah. not you're not like mentally disabled from cooking um but it's and there are so many things that all of us can't do and we are losers in that aspect of ourselves and that's okay you know um and yeah especially in the work that I do it's really important to to learn to be a loser all the time to mm. to not get so obsessed with winning that it distracts you from like the humility of learning because yeah. that's so important you know and it's okay to ah oh, I suck at that I'm a loser here it's not mm. cool here as opposed to trying to overcompensate um and or like dissociate because you're such a loser and you can't stand yourself yeah mm. yeah it's, um I, I just thought in my head um next time I get sometimes we all get starstruck we meet people think wow that's a cool dude cool girl next time I meet them I should start internally thinking I could even ask them know me I'll say hey um so what's the one thing you suck at like because we all do this with people <laughs> we all do this with people we're like yeah. oh they're so amazing you get all struck in the moment they're so present they're so this and that they're so cool Maybe I should ask them just yeah. a jarring, honest question like, hey, <laughs> what did you suck at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and because we all do, like, that's the thing. And, like, to be programmed into thinking that you always need to be, like, this best version of yourself, the worst parts of you are a part of you as well, you know. They don't need to kind of be sitting there like neglected children with kwashiorkor and malnourished. They can mm. actually be loved by you as those bad parts of yourself you yeah. know like you, you I don't mean like being self-indulgent or like um letting yourself go or you know what I mean in that sense but it's just having an integrated compassion for yourself to know that yep I'm like that and I could definitely use some consciousness around that and mm -hmm. that's the part of the inner work shadow is to know yeah. that you can become better 
but it's not actually going to go away. It's mm. like if you go on a diet to lose weight or gain weight, you're always going to need to be working on your weight and so on some level. There's never going to come to this point where, okay, I've lost the weight. People who do that tend to either gain it all back or lose it all back again because you've stopped doing the conscious aspects of working on your health and working on your body in in whatever way you want to work that on or this guy used to go to gym he's buff and now he's all skinny because he stopped working on that you Mm. know like everything is like a continual thing and Mm. that's a big part of the shadow it's it's not like there's no graduation day it's an integration where you stop slowly start to become more conscious of yourself and integrate parts of yourself that you don't like into more of you you know So then instead of judging yourself every time you are socially shy or socially awkward, you become conscious of yourself and you're able to love yourself there and Mm -hmm. to know that, oh, I failed that one time with that girl that I really liked, but it's okay. Tomorrow I'll be better. Yeah. Yeah. You reminded me, mine was so bad that, no, I don't think I said this many times, but um, so even just normal social situations or consider normal associations with family or friends, I would say something inappropriate or say something wrong, calibrated. And I remember afterwards, I would beat myself up over it in my head. So in my own comfort space, hours afterwards, I'll go, you done this, you done this, you done this, and look how it is, look how it is. And it would just replay on a loop, almost like beating myself up so bad. It's so crazy that I used to do that so much. And I think... Yeah. That was an exaggeration of what we all do to some extent. Mine was just so bad and so obvious that I can teach people that, fuck me, I had loads of social anxiety. Um, and I guess I learned just through keep doing it. Keep I, I, I eventually learned because I don't beat myself up now. Hardly ever. It doesn't come up this, um, I've done anything wrong. Now I know. Talk and you try your best and you let the chips fall with, with you may with people. But you're just killing yourself if you if you're judging yourself on social interactions and thinking you're a loser like and beating yourself up for being a loser. Um, now I was going to ask you, what's the consequences of not, uh, of, um, not, not integrating the shadow regarding being a loser. What would, what would you, what would, what would you see in people if they don't? For sure. Because, um, the winning or the striving towards winning isn't coming from like a genuine place it's coming from fear oftentimes the fear of the loser the dissociation Mm. from the loser so then you sabotage your wins or your prospects of winning because you're so afraid of being a loser and because you're Mm. not conscious of that or you're not integrated with that part of yourself so where you would sabotage um whatever it is that you're doing i can't think of an example right now and you really want to win at that, um, and you not you're so afraid of being a loser as opposed to understanding that you can win at that. Mm. The loser part of you is not going to go away. Like that part needs to be standing with you on the number one podium because this loser is a part of you, and that person always needs to be with you. So when you when you reject the loser, the loser comes back to sabotage you. That's the unfortunate part of most parts of your shadow is that they show up unconsciously in unfortunate things, like being a loser as a parent. Most people don't want to be losers at, at parenting, like most normal people. Um, but lo- a lot of people who are are so dissociated from that because they fear that. They fear facing that. Look at how you've been a loser here and accept that. Hmm. It's not trying to then fix things that are unfixable it's integrating this part of yourself and accepting this part of yourself then you can actually have a more authentic win because you're not trying to sabotage it because the win is not trying to run away from being a loser Mm. yeah there's a part of me that can really resonate deeply with what you said even with the parents thing like if you avoid it that which you're trying not to be you become it almost It, it does become like anything you shine a light to you you integrate and allow this darkness, a shadow. That's how I look at it. The darkness is like a yin yang. And if it's blind spotted yeah. and hidden, then it can control you in moments when you don't want it to control you. And then you go into um, getting triggered too much and projecting yeah. and not being a nice person as well. But then we can shine a light to it, an awareness of, oh, it's just, I'm just a human being and this is what we do. Then, yeah, 
basically shining a light on the unconscious is so important in this realm. I think it's breaking up a little bit. One second. Are you okay? Have we got? Okay. Yeah. The... One second. I paused it. I you. you can hear me. Oh, yeah. We can't see you, but we can hear you. We can hear you though. Okay. Yeah. I can I see think... you great now. Okay. Cool. So I can't see you, but you can carry on talking. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. And now? Mm, still, your face is frozen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was saying that. <laughs> Mine. Okay. Oh, okay. sorry, Harry. It was a network. It was my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi kind of just. That's okay. Um, it always happens. That cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. No, I was saying that, like, when you, like, for example, the parents' example, um, a lot of people put this pressure on themselves to be like the best dad, the best mom, the best parent. The truth is, you're gonna be just a parent with all your shit with all your great qualities, with all your worst attributes, like it's it's not um it's not gonna go away. But when you are able to integrate that you are gonna suck at parenting and you're gonna be great at parenting the same. You mm -hmm. are more able to integrate that and to know that, oh, I had a shit day as a parent there. Or no, I had a good day or I'm having better days. Um mm -hmm. And to know that that's always going to be the case in reality, you know, as I said, when you're standing on that podium with your win, the loser needs to be with you because the loser's going to like tackle you off that stage and cause you to sabotage that win so badly that yeah. you're not going to believe it because it's a not, it's an unconscious part of you that oh. is now coming to take the fall. That's a whole different to, topic, to isn't them. it? Um, feeling like you're deserving, worthy of what you actually have achieved. Sometimes you don't always yeah. feel. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the loser. The loser feels worthless. Mm. Um, and when you don't integrate that worthless loser, they're going to sabotage you when you want to stand in the worthiness yes. of winning. I'm even thinking of um compliments. Some people don't know how to, and me before, you don't know how to receive a compliment because you people can say things mm. that, about you that are true and you can't even receive it sometimes yeah yeah and it's because you're afraid of receiving that so what does it mean when you receive that you're beautiful when you haven't integrated your ugliness you can't receive the beautiful mm. you know because Don't both are going to be true mm. yeah you can't believe it it's the ugly needs to stand with you for you to truly integrate and believe the beauty because the reason you don't believe when someone says you're beautiful is because you also know that you're ugly. Both are true. Right. It's just that in that moment, someone yeah. is seeing your beauty. And yes. the ugliness that you don't acknowledge and you don't see then says, no, you're not. Shut yeah. up. Right. You are. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't even see in that moment that there is good qualities in you that can come out sometimes. You're like too much in the I'm yeah. um, I'm ugly all the time mode, which is a loser, mm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when you integrate that, you can acknowledge that, that, yeah, I'm ugly and I'm beautiful. Mm. I'm a loser and I'm a winner. It's true. Like two things can be juxtaposed and true at the same time. And that's a big part of the integration. So when you can call yourself out and say oh that was uncalled for because you're not so ashamed of that part of yourself that just stepped out and, and attacked you know then you can apologize because you've integrated that part of yourself and you don't need to then go and do the whole sumo wrestling in your own mind you know yeah how crazy yeah i like um loser else for loser i liked your g for grandiosity and uh, all of them are really good um so how do you do yeah. how do you teach them in your courses? Like um so you are online on Facebook. 
Whereabouts are you as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the course, as I said, it's individual. It's personal. Like, because this is like very personal thing. So it's I, I would never like ask a client, go tell the world what an asshole you were and now how much you've integrated that. No. So um, those are usually very personal one-to-one -one, um, individualized courses for what aspect of yourself you are wanting to work on. So for example, some people, a lot of the time, it's like just general life things. Like mm -hmm. I'm in this phase of my, my life and I'm wanting to become more of this and then mm -hmm. looking at the shadow um, of that. So the structure is usually I, I start off on like a 10 week personal one-to-one -one course. Um, where we go through a specific aspect of yourself that you are wanting to work through and help you integrate. And so that is a coaching usually twice a week for one hour at a time for 10 weeks where we are working through that aspect of your shadow. So there's an accountability aspect of that because then you see how you've progressed over 10 weeks, but the work is really up to you, you know, mm -hmm. the meeting and the tools and the accountability is what I provide, but the work is something that you need to actually be willing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and some things, as I said, with some people, it's spiritual things, it's ancestral things, it's lineage things, things that require more deeper work. Um, but for most people, it's self-work. It's a very unconscious self that mm. wants to become more conscious of themselves because they're wanting that part of themselves to come forward in whatever aspect of themselves. So mm. someone who's continually, for example, failing in relationships, sometimes they have a very wounded inner child and they have a very unintegrated part of themselves um, mm. that they then need to work through, you know, like, as I said, some things need healing, some things are trauma-based, but other things, it's really becoming more aware of yourself, becoming more conscious of yourself. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't want to do. They want to fix and not really understanding that you don't need to fix yourself. There's nothing wrong with you. You need mm. to become conscious of yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. There's nothing actually wrong. Oh, I mean, Yes just conscious of every aspect of your life and we're all humans here and we all have the same pretty nice thing about it. we all have the same negative and positive emotions and i'd yeah. say that we have a tendency when we go through a lot of unconsciousness or we're unhealed and we have a lot of work to ourselves tendency to think that we're the only ones that suffer these problems and these thoughts and these yeah. emotions when actually uh none of the emotions that you ever suffer or even the deeper suffering of i'm the ultimate victim it's not really yeah. you. It's uh, something that we've all experienced before. It's like, yeah, like, and yeah. everyone feels like the ultimate victim. Like it's yeah. it's such a like I I haven't gotten to V on social media yet, but that's the V word, victim. victim. We are all the ultimate victim in our own minds, yeah. and that's a part of you, because the other extreme is don't be a victim. You're full of shit. Yeah. You are a victim. Yeah, you can integrate the victim by becoming a victor, like becoming a victorious person over the things mm. that have victimized you, but you will always be a victim. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, integrating that, because it's such a shameful part of yourself to know that something else had that much power over you, that you then get into the, like, the grandiosity of like thinking that nothing can, oh, please, okay. Mm -hmm. Things can overcome you in this life. Things can overpower you in this life, but you can mm -hmm. be victorious over those things. Like there's nothing wrong with being a victim. What yeah. can be wrong is dwelling there past where you want to be there. So where mm -hmm. victimhood is stopping you from things, that's where it's not working for you. Yeah. And um, there's no ultimate victory, an ultimate hero of your own movie than if you're the ultimate victim. So we do need... <laughs> we need to be challenged in life oh by the way the time's running out is there anything last you want to say to people and also how do they find you through facebook i know maybe other mediums channels yes yeah uh so uh the last thing i want to say is that it's okay to be a person it's okay to not have your life together in fact you'll never have your life together that's why you're human but when you integrate your shadow and you're willing to look at yourself more holistically, 
you can become a version of yourself that you actually want to be as opposed to constantly looking outside of yourself for a validation you can find that authentic validation from within when you become a person who is integrated in both your light and your shadow and where people can find me i'm on facebook Malo. i'm also on um, tiktok as well as youtube um the Malo blog yeah Cool. I'll put the links to all of them, including your TikTok. I think I need to add you on TikTok. I'll put them um, below. So I want to say thank you very much, CC, for the work that you do that I've seen now on Facebook. And this interview has been brilliant. How are you on doing your work where you are in South Africa, right? So enjoy your time there. There's a lot of of work needs to be done on this earth. So I'm appreciative of the way you deliver your style and your unique personality is perfect for what you do. So well done. Thank you, Harry. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks for the chat. I really enjoyed connecting with you. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Speak again. We should do this again. So thanks.